Now, our next guest, 12 seasons with Dublin, debut in 2010, eight All-Irelands between 2011 and 2020. Kevin McMenamin has announced his retirement from inter-county football. He joins us now. Kevin, hello. Great to have you on. Thanks very much. Yeah, good to, good, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, good to be here. No, it's great to have you. 12 seasons, eight All-Irelands. I mean, if you were going to pitch up your timing with an inter-county team, 2010 to 2020 Dublin, that was pretty good timing. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, it was a, it was an epic <clears throat> decade or so, or twelve years, and um, yeah, I loved every, loved every second of it. This had been on your mind, I'm sure. Like you're 35 very shortly, so, and I know you were at the Today. Olympics last year. Today, happy yeah. birthday, happy birthday! Yeah. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you were at the Olympics last year, so I look. It's not a shock when a thirty-five-year-old retires. Were you tempted to give it another year, or was this coming for a long time? Yeah, I was probably coming. Yeah, it, it, it's not. This isn't a um, ripping off the band-aid moment. It's it's happened in in uh, yeah, deathbed held and cuts. You know, it's been slow. So, um, yeah, I was. It was a tough decision to choose. Essentially, my work and my future. I suppose over Dublin last summer. I wasn't shooting the lights out. I was finding form a little bit difficult, slowing body slowing down a little bit. Um, so yeah, look, that was probably it. When I when I when I went to the games, that was probably the end of it for me. I would have liked to maybe go again, but I'm fine. I found it hard to get get to the level that's needed, you know. And um, I think it's time that there's look. I I think I would have found it hard to play. I didn't play at one game last year. Um, I think I played seven minutes in 2020 in the championship. So, like, I kind of think if I'm going to be there, I'd need to be um, contributing a bit more than, than seven minutes or or hoping I'd get. Like, last year was kind of hoping I'd come right and I'd play in the semis or a final, you know, and it wasn't enough for me to forego the opportunity of, yeah, traveling the world with the, the Irish boxers. It was a fairly epic eight weeks. It turned out to be Paris and then six weeks in Tokyo. But, um so that was kind of when when the decision started, I guess. Can you remember moments where you started to realise the body was slowing down? Yeah, like a couple of times, particularly this year in the club, I got a few little niggles that I hadn't been getting before. Last year, 20, 2020, like I didn't start one or two games in training, you know, for the second team. And that's kind of a, okay. that's a warning sign, you know. It's very, it's hard to survive that, you know. Um so I remember one particular night I didn't start and I was fuming. I remember open DC, I wanted to boot the fence down. I was so angry. Um, but look, th- these are just, they're all little signs that, listen, it's not, you're just not at the standard anymore and stuff like that. You know, don't get me wrong. I feel like once I get my form, particularly in the summer, the 2020 season didn't suit me, the, the El Muck. You know, I think I'm a little bit slicker on the, you know, in the summer. But um, yeah, so yeah, little, little times like that, I guess. This year, once or twice, we had a couple of games I played this year, behind, like, you know, friendlies and stuff. And I just wasn't just a little bit slower and mm. turn over the ball a bit more. And it's just and then you could then what happened, the problem is, is then you come out in the train and you score one four and you're like, I'm the man again, you know, but it's consistency gets tougher, I think, as you get older. So have you lost a lot of pace? Would Kevin McMenamin of 2017 burn 2021 version over 30 yards now? <laughs> potentially yeah yeah like I've changed a lot I noticed like uh this year with the with the club I was kind of a totally different role playing out around the middle a, a lot a lot more and yeah. trying to use my head rather than my body but have I lost pace I probably have a little bit yeah yeah I guess it all um, adds up you're just you're 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 a thinking playmaker now for St. Jude's is that right yeah well look we'll see we've a change <laughs> we'll have a change now next year all going well so we'll see what's what's in store for me and hopefully I'll survive. I'll keep going as long as I can with Jude's. But yeah, my role changed. I played inside for probably the last 15 years with Jude's and um, played left corner forward or full forward. But this was the first year that they tried me outside. So right. a little bit of something different, you know? Yeah. yeah. I guess sports people die twice. So in retiring, you get to have a little glimpse of your obituary. And when that time comes, many, many, many decades off into the future, I think we can safely say the goal against Kerry in the 2011 All-Ireland Final is going to be shown. That was the one which popped up and popped into everybody's mind. 64 minutes gone, four points down. I'm curious, do you remember that moment now as you saw it in your head? Or have you just seen it so many times on television that you remember the TV version? 
Um, I, I, um, the truth, the, the answer to that is I have a kind of a screenshot in my head kicking the ball, if that's, if that makes sense. I don't remember getting it or anything, you know, but I have a kind of a screenshot of kicking it. I remember we were, we were kicking the day before me and Mossy Quinn and he told me to keep, he says, you lift your head too early when you're scooting, shooting for goals. He says, keep your head over it. Keep it, keep it down. He's saying for the goal line. That was my memory of it. So I'm going to have this little screenshot like you have on your phone of this, like <laughs> I can still picture it now of the head down and just seeing it going in into, into the Hill 16. And it was, um, yeah, look, it's a, lo- it's a lovely memory. It's oh, mad. I look, I feel like I'm a different, per- it's a different person nearly that scored that goal. But um, I'm, look, so I was proud to have had that, oh, yeah. um, been, been, been that, that, that part of that game. And then obviously the decade since. Do, were you conscious of an angry Bernard Brogan saying, pass me the ball? Um, not really, no. No, Head down. I was a conscious of a of a of a Mark O'Shea might come and tackle me, but I wasn't <laughs> conscious of a Werner Brogan. No, not He's everyone. Got plenty of those back post goals over the years, but uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I had the tunnel vision in fairness um, in that moment. Not everyone, uh, for whatever reason, even elite players necessarily rise to the occasion or can deliver on big moments. Now you seem to have a knack of doing that. Who knows as to why? I did see an interesting comment from you. And it was interesting because I would associate you with delivering in big moments, which is a great thing to be able to say about a sports person. But you had said that before you'd met a sports psychologist in 2010, you would have found the bigger days tougher and you wouldn't have necessarily delivered on the bigger days. So that's a hell of a changeover from pre-2010 to what you did in 11. Yeah. And do you know what, what I, I actually, maybe not that I was misquoted, but you are right. I found it difficult, particularly at inter-county level. But growing up, I would have been... I had a kind of a track record of playing well in finals and, you know, like man of the match in big games and performing. But I just, I think I just, that extra step just was a bit of a, um, I don't know. It was just, it was just an extra level out of my comfort zone. And I kind of questioned myself a lot, but I, I look, I, I developed, I, I don't know if I'd call myself a big, moment because at the time they're not moments it's it's a history that makes them the moments like do you know what i mean um so 2011 isn't a moment unless you know kevin nolan kicks the ball over or bernard brogan or you know amy fennel wins a throw in or Klucko kicks the ball over the do you know what i mean so it's history it's it's time then that makes them the moments but um i suppose i yeah, I, I love the, the 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 clutch part of games like I loved I just love that competitiveness game down to the wire like you know I was in a game of Astro last night me and me, me and my brother are playing against each other and like it was like level at one minute to ten like and we're, we're both nailing each other trying to go for the win like you know and I just I guess I just love uh, that's the that's the part of the sport that I, I think I love the most just the competing and the, the yeah it's a physical thing but there's a chess match as well and um, I'm kind of waffling a bit but again no, I, I think no, that's no. the bit that I love you know no that makes total sense Kind of an interesting thing, Mossy saying that to you about keep your head down. Did you have to work very hard at the skills of the game? Obviously, it would have a, a degree of it comes very naturally to you, or you're not anywhere near a Dublin panel. But would you have improved as a player across the 2010s? I think so. Yeah, yeah. It kind of. It, I was reflecting on this the other day. Physically, it was probably the first few years I did a lot, a lot of work on under under Gilroy. Um, probably next was technical. I started doing a lot of wall sessions open dudes had the wall up there and I would bring the two balls up and did a lot of work on me finishing and stuff like that. And then later on in the career, actually, as I'm speaking now, it became more tactical that I started trying to figure out the game. And then the fourth one is, I suppose, mindset. And that, mm-hmm. that, that was a constant that I just, I loved learning about and had a challenge to get better at. Um, and look, that became my, um, my biggest strength, I think, by the end of my career, you know. Although I found it hard last year in 2020, I found it hard mentally just when you're not when you're not contributing as, as much, you know, you don't get as much change out of it. I found it hard to be as disciplined. But certainly um I was able to stay I was I, I learned to stay, you know, calm when when it when it mattered, I suppose, you know. Yeah. And Kev, what's a wall session then? Is is grabbing possession, jink, jink the other way and then hit a target, that kind of stuff? 
Yeah, like we have a spot up in Jude's that we at like, um, and there's loads of targets in the wall. You mean two balls? You're just imagining scenarios where you're, you're, you're get the get the ball off here, and you have to finish it, or you'll have someone with you calling out. You know, we used to we used to have numbers on the goal. You know, like one to nine were different squares of the goal. So if they say nine, that's where you got to go bottom right, or little things like that, just to get you get you thinking a little bit more accurate, a little bit better kicking. Did a lot of work probably on shooting stuff like that and yeah. trying to get a bit more um a little bit more accurate and both feet I'd, stuff like that you know i'd say and working on the boat feet i'd say that made a huge difference i'd say you could feel the benefits of that almost instantly well it, it's the one thing that it really and jim was very good at it and he did a lot of work Mick bone would have been there with us in the first few years and under jim's regime and did a lot of skills work and i think i just <laughs> I just got, I just got a bit slicker, you know, you yeah. better ball, with, you know, less you, you could run out for a ball with a cornerback, you know, running beside you with a fist under your arm, trying to punch the ball out and you just get better at controlling the ball and protecting it. You get better at, you know, nearly, um, yeah, taking tackles and not spilling the ball, you yeah. know, a little bit more accurate, less your, less turnovers from sloppiness or spilling their foot passing and stuff. And, yeah. um, it's just, it's just all being a bit, being a bit tidier so i just and i love that i loved that the, you, you, it, when you improve on something you feel great going into games you're like listen yeah. i've done the work on my skill you know what i mean so yeah um because i remember listening to paul flynn i think he was talking on second captains and it was in advance of some game and he was he made such an interesting point which hadn't occurred to me really before uh, he was saying running with the ball at club level, you can do serious damage if you're good at running with the ball. He said, inter-county level, so much easier against better players to get swallowed up and get into all sorts of trouble. So, you know, I would associate you a little bit with running with the ball. You've got to be damn good at doing that or you're going to cough up possession and it looks awful. Yeah, and I coughed up a fair, a fair bit in my time. But um, uh, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and But you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that was always one of the things that I I, I really liked about the game, just getting taken. And that, that, that kind of was moved from the game a lot, particularly for inside forwards. Later on in the decade, it became you became a sharpshooter and come around the loop rather than, you know, kicking a ball in, win the ball and take a guy on, tick tap it over the bar. So that was probably a bit of a shame. I would have loved to be taking guys on for my whole career, but this just wasn't... Um, yeah, but I like that, and I think that probably helped me separate myself a little bit from a lot. Like, like there's players that I've played with that I'd say easily like to like could have played more. Like I remember, I just felt like Connor McHugh, excellent footballer, and I used to always be going head to head with him for um, like me spot late on in my career, kind of. Um, and I, well, I tended to get the nod because I had that bit of something different. And there was there was players like Costello and Dean Rock who could, you know, wear that sharpshooter. So it was nice. I think I got an extra couple of years yeah. maybe on the field because, yeah, I was just a little bit different. Different. Than unorthodox. Well, it changes the pattern. I mean, and look, it probably ties in with the dreaded super sub tag, but it's a lovely option off the bench. If you put yourself in the position of a manager and you've, you know, it's round the corner stuff and patience and possession. If I look at the bench and I've got someone who can totally change it up by running directly at them, I can see how managers would say, well, let's throw that in there and see how the defense re reacts to that all of a sudden. And, and probably did pay dividends in the last 20 minutes of lots of games. Um, yeah, potentially. Yeah. And I think probably, it, it, it at times I might have lost out on selection, you know, 50 50s, you know, for that reason. But yeah, did you, look, did it you, is did, what it is. did you have a run? Because so certainly sub initially you get into the side and then the latter half of the, of the career, it's, it's hard to check stats in GA. Did you get a run of being starter for a number of years? Yeah, like I probably, I, 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 I would have. And in my first, in my first, probably apart from Jim's first year. Um, I'd say for my first seven years, I started most of the game, most league games yeah. and most Leinster games. Um, I kind of had in, into a, maybe under Pat, I was I didn't start much championship under Pat. Um, but by the time Jim came around, I started particularly 2014. I was I had a good Leinster. I had a poor quarterfinal against Monaghan and I was dropped. 2015, I had a good Leinster. I was dropped, I think, for the quarterfinal against Fermanagh. 
So for all the knockout games, 26, 2016 was probably my best season. I started, I think, every game that year. Maybe yeah. I, I had a shoulder injury. I missed the start of the league and it did me the world of good. I had loads of energy and I only came back in about mid-March and I was able to, you know, play play a lot yeah. more in championships. So I suppose I did have a run. I don't know the, the breakdown between off the bench and um, starting or whatever, but... yeah. Uh, how did you find a few all, runs? I guess a few runs. How did you find that? Because I think that's a tough fringe to operate on. You know, take the the twelve, thirteen lads who have a fair idea. I'm going to start pretty much every game. That takes a huge amount of uh, stress, worry, energy draining kind of thoughts out of that. They don't think about that. Whereas Kevin mm-hmm. McMenamin, it sounds like for a lot of his career, approaching a lot of big games is whether he wants to or not thinking. Am I in? Am I out? Am I in? Am I out? Did I play well at train tonight? Didn't. Is that going to affect yeah. me? God, what's he thinking? Did he look at me funny? What's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bit of <laughs> that, that internal of that. chatterbox going on. Yeah, yeah. And look, it is what it is. It's it's that that was look, that's the role I played. And look, I I I took a lot of pride in it. I I liked it. I liked being that being that player on the team. Would have liked to play more as mm. as as you know, we all would, but look, it is, it is what it is. Maybe it got me an extra few games towards the end of towards my career. End. Um yeah. takes a mental strength to do it though. Not everyone can do it. That's the thing. Yeah. And do, do, do you know what I'd say on that is like, I, I always, it was mainly under Jim like that, but I always felt that I was being fairly treated is, is how I would put it. So there was very, there was a few games maybe where I felt this is unfair. I'm, I deserve to be playing in this game. Um, but for the for the majority of the time, you know, I didn't. I on average, I wasn't maybe playing playing well enough. So it's not. I, Jim was very fair in how he selected the team, nice. um, and as it was Pat and, and Desi, but I guess the majority of this came under Jim. You know, and, and we would, did, I had a good relationship relationship with Jim as well. You, you know, he was, yeah. he was fairly straight up and honest with me, and it became a bit annoying towards the end. Yet, yeah, you know, you're going to be finishing the game rather than starting. Just. Yeah, you're a finisher. It's great. He said to me one day, you're thing. going to be, a, you're going to finish this game, and I did. I misunderstood him, and I thought I was starting and finishing. <laughs> I anyway. get the full seventy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And would would that <clears throat> did that take on a rhythm of I don't know uh, Friday morning on the way into work, you see the dreaded phone call from Jim Gavin, or would it be a word of training, or maybe not? Maybe after a while, he didn't even bother with one on one chats. Yeah, there probably was a bit of that going on over the years. Yeah, you know, he was, might have been different every season, but. It is, yeah. That's just that's just part of it, you know. Yeah. So you you said a really interesting thing there about how the game changed and like, I mean, talk about timing. You think twenty eleven, and I think of that Donegal game in the semi final, and that's kind of a landmark day for how the game has changed. And and from memory, I think you came on and kicked the point there. But um, that is a hell of an era to be inside forward those years post eleven with what Donegal were doing and how the game was changing. So. Um, give us your sense of that because you must have been and then probably watching the club scene change as well and like everybody imitates what Donegal do you must have been sitting inside the forward line at times thinking this is bullshit this is not the game I I signed up for at all so um, how did you adapt to that? Yeah um, I guess uh, like we always probably after we were beaten in 20. 20- 14 like we didn't change much on to in in the first few years when it was only really Donegal and one or two northern teams doing it we didn't change too much we didn't face a northern team I think in knockout until 2016 maybe um we just got on with it like again we, we did a lot of we did a lot of work on it on um you know learning to adapt our play we were kind of a swashbuckling you know all attack all out and it worked we played Donegal a few times league games and we just said let's go man to man all over the park and see what happens and it actually it was a one way of counteracting now we tried it in 2014 and they probably outfoxed us a little bit we were um, a little bit a little bit naive it's well documented yeah um, as a forward see it's it's weird at the time you don't notice it changing too much it's only when you look back and like shit like we used to have three on three inside and now we've got you know six on ten you know and it changes very quickly um but you just you just change very slowly and you know change change your game and i probably yeah my, in, instead of getting five chances to take on a guy in a game it might now maybe now it's only two or whatever it is 
Um, and then, but see, you lo- you, then you love picking the lock as well. You love trying to prepare to out- outsmart the team and to beat them with your head, you know, with your smarts rather than, you know, traditionally it was just kick, kick, kick and run and, you know, go at them. And you probably, a team's probably had 60, 70 possessions in a game back then. And whereas by mid decade, end of the decade, it was probably down by 20, 30% where people were controlling the ball a bit more, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's subtle changes, but I, I, I enjoy, I always loved it. We always kind of like treated it as a, as a big challenge that we can, we didn't want to see the country because it was happy. You're dead, right? It was happening in club teams. And I think there was a lot of, um, you know, it, it's very tempting to go, listen, we, for a club team, and I'm not picking on you now, but like say, you know, we conceded a lot last year. Let's just go and drop everyone back and we'll, yeah. we'll try and keep it tight and catch them on a counter. Like it's a bit, it's, it's an easy, them. it's 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 one of the easier games. It's it's an easy enough game plan to get better mm. down pretty quickly, I guess, you know. Yeah, and I think it's not it's not as it's not it's not working anymore. You know, teams are figuring it out and you can see how slow the game has gone. Like, you yeah. know. Um, well, I always um I remember being at was it the 18 final you played Tyrone? I think it was. Yeah. I was at that game and even, I don't know, you scored a goal relatively early on. And so there was like a three or four point lead. And it just felt like the, the air went out of the stadium. The game was over because you were in such control. But it was it was fascinating to be there and to watch the level of control and the level of comfort D- you, Dublin, seemed to have in possession against that type of mass defence. Like there were always at least two players with um, chalk on their boots on the wings. It was patient. It was, we're in no rush here. It was... We've we've seen this picture a million times now. We're comfortable with it. That's how it looked. It looked like that that type of defense did not spook the Dublin side at all anymore. Was that how it felt at that stage? Um, I wouldn't say it feels nice and comfortable when you're playing against your own. But um, <laughs> I know I know what you're saying. And again, probably that's designed to take advantage of an aggressive, you know emotional performance. You know, an emotional tactical game. Whereas we we had to become a bit more structured and logical to, because that's what that, that's what you know an opposition wants when they're putting bodies back they want to you know trap you you know they want to get a double up and turn you over and get, roar at you when you're on the ground and be off you know on the on the, on their counter attack and stuff so um we kind of just the, the the rules of engagement changed i guess and yeah. we we just we became it was probably it was probably the season where Dublin were um, uh, like we never were never tr- trouble really. Like I think no, we played Gal- we played Galway in a semi final, who had kind of a, a mini resurgence, but we weren't we were never in danger. You know, it was no. the it was it was the um, the All Ireland that it was never a real uh, danger. You know, no, like, you, it, was like you, it was it was in, no, in, in games. In, in games. games, yeah, but it felt it felt like everyone was at arm's length. And so when you said that 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 later period of your career, you enjoyed the tactical side of things. That that's ex- that's the period you're talking about. That was real intellect meets them trying to make it a war. Yeah, it's probably an oversimplification. But sure. Yeah, and again, I probably I, I was never into tact- tactics really, but I just got started watching more videos and liked the like the fact that geez you had to watch a lot of these guys to figure out what they were doing and you had to mold yourself in a way that you don't you know you don't play into their strengths you know their mm. a game you know so i guess this just seems like a very happy story really um 12 seasons a lot of success teammates and you all seem to love each other and have a great bond um is there a highlight? Is there like a special memory? I'm sure there are lots, but it does seem like this was just great because too often we talk about GEA and it's like, oh God, the commitment was so much and it was tough going and, you know, people can uh, play up the the more difficult aspects, but it, God, I don't know. I think most people would give their their right arm to get a, a 12 years like that. You know, it's just seemed like yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. It's fair. Yeah. Like I suppose, yeah, that's, that's true in many ways. It, it was it was very hard, like, you know, like I, I like it was part of a group that put in a lot of effort. The one thing I would say is that I, I put a bit too much of myself into it. Like I probably, I fe- that's why I found it hard maybe to leave because it, it did become a, you know, a kind of an identity thing that it was very much, this is who I was, you know, mm-hmm. as much as I had loads of interest outside of sport, 
it was kind of always the anchor, you know. So just but I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty good anchor. We all need some anchor. It's not a bad one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's fair. That's a fair point. Um, but so look, it was it was I made some fantastic friends, like got to see three of the best leaders in the GEA work and they're all different ways. And um, so many. Yeah, made so many great friends and players and backroom staff. Um, and it's been it's been nice as well. And to like none of the players mentioned scoring a goal in a match or, you know, when they when they gave me a call or a text or whatever so like and that's something that I was like kind of proud of because like it's like you know they might ref- reference what you're like at training or what you're like as a teammate and stuff and that that's probably what's meant the most to me in the in the last few weeks you know that you know you did your bit when you you know when the sun was shining you you made hay kind of thing you know yeah. um, so was that that wasn't the highlight I know that was your question I probably had look number of highlights most of it was you know on training camps with lads or maybe in the, the, the Crow Park dressing room where there's just a feeling of accomplishment and sometimes you don't even, you just need to look at someone, you mm-hmm. know, after mm-hmm. a match and be like, see, we, we, we did it. We got through like um, big games. Obviously, it's an amazing feeling scoring big goals in Crow Park. It's electric and, mm-hmm. you know, 2016 was probably a good year. I, I, was, I was personally proud of being able to perform in big games and, you know, I didn't get, I got a chance as a sub, which I found obviously a bit easier, but it was nice that year to be able to, like, particularly the semi-final against Kerry, I was, I was moving, moving well and happy with how I played that day. And so, so there's some of the kind of key memories, but when it comes down to it, it's like the sing songs after down yeah. in the, the Lord Edward, I did a message from a teammate the other day and we had a video of the two of us singing out, me and Paul Mannion singing a rain night in Soho. It was, it was amazing. You know, those, some of those <laughs> nights that, um, although he's not, he's not on my wish list at the minute because he, he beat me in the county final a few weeks ago, but yeah. he's, um, yeah, we've a good, we've a good friendship, you know, myself and, and Paul, but, but a lot of the lads we, we were, we were playing with, you know? Yeah. I got that impression when you say, so, I, I mean, I, I didn't want to dismiss how all consuming it must be for sure. And I, I get the, the point about it becoming like such a big part of your identity because how could it not was there ever a point where you thought god the commitment here is borderline too much like were we talking in one way or another four five six sometimes seven days a week in terms of commitment and commitments um i I, i'd say some of my teammates would say yes i i never found it too much there'll be seasons where you'd be like oh will the season never end like you know even a couple of years with replays and stuff where you're yeah. you're holding on for the like you kind of you know you know the nature of it you know it's eight months or nine months and then you know you're getting your break so you can kind of justify it um uh what there was it, so i'd be a bit kind of worn out by the end of the season sometimes and it might have leaked in then where i wasn't as committed to the club as i'd like to be yeah um so a bit of that, but no, like, you know what? It just felt like we were on a journey, on a crusade. And it was, you know, I spoke to a fellow this morning, a friend of mine who runs a fashion company, like, and he was talking about it. So it can be all consuming at times, but it's great. It's very rewarding when you, um, you know, when you're, when you're getting places, when you're going, when you're, when you're moving and you're accomplishing yeah. stuff, it's, it can be very rewarding as well, even though it's like, um, there's a sweet spot there as well. Yes. Burning out, you know? Because I thought it was very interesting. You said maybe one of your best seasons was when you only came back in March and you had a real burst of energy then and you could sustain that across the season. Yeah. yeah I mean, look, I, I'm going to put this more bluntly than it's fair, but, and so you, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, it's me saying this, not you, but I would have thought, for instance, for all the training that the dubs would have had to do respectfully to the other counties, there must have been part of you guys on some level thinking, man, we are training our backsides off. We're living like monks here for eight months of the year and it's only one game, maybe against Mayo. That's actually really kind of what we're after. And you meant, look, 2018, no one came close. And you, there must have been part of you thinking, this is not worth eight months to play one serious proper game. Now, this is a championship structure question, so we won't go too far down that road because it can get okay, boring. Okay. But, but you know what I mean? Like there must have been a degree of like, even in December when your back's flogging yourselves, you must have been thinking, Realistically, we're training for one game here in September. Yeah, like uh, I, 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 that never happened actually. Right, you know, and 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 I think there was there was enough internal competition, and there was enough. 
there's enough respect, you know, and, and I, you have to respect your opponents. And the only way you can respect your opponents is by giving them everything you have, like, do you know, yeah. and, and so that when we, when we got drawn against whoever it was in a Leinster championship or in a league, whatever it is, um, or in a Leinster final, it was that Mayo didn't exist at that stage yeah. or Kerry or I, Tyrone I was, or Donegal I, I, didn't exist. Like, you I, know? It's, it's to your credit, like, and Paddy Andrews has talked about it on the podcast. He does an off the ball here with Andy Moran and Tommy, uh, Rooney and he, he says the same thing I, that is like to this Dublin team's unbelievable credit that you could take every single one of those Leinster matches year after year after year so seriously like it's unbelievable I guess the internal competition drives it I'm sure but man I like that's where most teams would slip up somewhere along the way or just get a bit jaded by it yeah yeah maybe but so, so it never became a like oh we'll play x y and z we were always kept kept on our toes like and I think it's it's a lesson from sport around the world. It's a lesson that our management would have always, but it it makes extra, it makes just common sense. Like, do you know what I mean? You practice, yeah. you you give you give your best. Like, well, that's what you're. You, you don't go out to uh, what what times I have a match at three o'clock. I have to go out and you know what I mean. You go you prepare the way you prepare, and, all, and then that makes the the big games a bit easier because you're you're in the same mode. You're in the same in the same things. You know so. Mm. Yeah, the, the 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 intensity rises outside, but you just you you stay in it, and like that's what I do a lot of this in work. Like it's like yeah. you're trying to get people to inoculate themselves to pressure by by treating everything the same as as best they can, you know. Yes, um, and and I think that's a a mindset, whatever. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Give us um a trait or traits which jumped out to you of say Pat Gilroy. Jim Gavin, for instance, which struck you as impressive or, or important or, you know, reasons as to why things did go so well for so many years. Um, a trade of Pat Gilroy. Pat, Pat was always very, like, um, uh, like, dominant. Like, he kind of had a, had a, like, this way, follow me kind of, you know, atmosphere with him. Like, let, like this is where we're going. Like, come with me kind of thing. Um, and... I love that. I I remember being very um like what's the word? Uh, it's a very basic word. I don't know why I can't like intimidated by him a little bit when I came right. on the panel. Like he was very a very strong character, and I was kind of a a bit shy on yeah. the team and stuff. Um, and he's big as well. Like he's imposing. He's got yeah, a presence. Yeah, but but very yeah. This way, follow me is how I describe him. You know, in in the in the most complimentary way possible. That yes, he knew what he wanted, and he wanted you to. To, to come with him you know and that that wasn't just because you were a new kid on the block the older players would have he would have been able to dominate the group for one dominate sounds like a, a an unfair word but you know he had that he had that ability over everybody i i i, I think so yeah like and he'd be he would be a, a very good leader i would see him as a good leader he's been successful in in yeah. most things he's, he's he's done in his life i believe in other teams i've heard he was did well with the hurlers and he's done well you know and stuff um, Jim again. Geez, I, 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 Jim was just um very um like driven, covered all, uh, covered all the boxes, and certainly would have had a similar you know power over the group that he was. He he, he was willing to do whatever whatever it took, you know, whatever like, and he he just worked so hard, watched all the footage was willing to have the conversations with every member of the panel, was willing to get a really good backroom staff. So I, I can't I can't sum him up his sum him up as clearly as maybe Gilroy. Nice. Um but um a very um just like a just a, dr- a driven driven guy and is willing was willing to um yeah was willing to do whatever needed to be needed to to, to get over the line. He was very good at like He'd always, he, he'd take challenge very very well you know he was very good at asking people for feedback and stuff and right. never batted an eye I remember one day I said something to him in front of a group and like I was like Shh. like if I said that to a thousand other people they'd you know take me aside and go don't not that I would speak to someone disrespectfully but you know a direct challenge to a leader is and, and he's like he would treat it as feedback and say, okay, how can, what can we do? And how can we learn and grow from it? Like there was no, no ego involved. It was, it was, let's bring the team up. So he's a fella, a fella, I greatly admire. Same. And I know you didn't ask, but same, yeah. same with Desi, a fella that, um, 
again a slightly different character but very understanding of the player but very um very driven as well and wants to wants to do as best he can for the for the players and wants you know wants them to be the best they can be on and mm-hmm. off the field wants them to be successful so it'd be interesting to see how the next um the next period goes for, for yeah that no, for sure be. that's impressive on gavin's part to take challenges like that and, and genuinely welcome them and take them in the right way because very easy to be like, no, 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 I'm in charge here. I know what I'm doing. They did an interview with yeah, Dennis Walsh. Sound, Sorry, go on. Yeah, go on. It probably sounds a bit like that he was, yeah, he he, was, he didn't suffer bills. If it came from the right place, he was willing to listen, I guess. Yeah. You know. if, if Kevin McManaman says it, I'll listen. Rest of you chumps, no. Because <laughs> he did, he did um, an interview with Dennis Walsh recently and like it was a bit ahead of the, I must have been 19 final and... It was all about how like they met the day before the All Ireland bloody final to plan what happens if it goes to a draw and a replay. And it was like, this is what's going to happen. They had like uh, people ready in the stands to give the players massages in case it was a draw. Food was ready to be carted in. There were text messages that would go to all the parents to say, look, the gala thing is cancelled tonight, but they're still you're still invited to dinner, but the players will be in a separate room. And so when the bloody draw happens, all of this stuff is like ready to go. And I don't know. Not many are preparing for an All Ireland final and taking that many. Like that's you're down the list of boxes there if you're at that crack. So yeah, that was yeah, a, that was yeah. a little eye opener if he's planning for that. Yeah, I was supposed to. I remember being supposed to be going to Croatia myself. A few days later, I hadn't planned for the replay. <laughs> um, so yeah, and look, that's that's a testament to um, how I guess how how prepared he was. I don't know was he have texts ready and massage masseuses ready or whatever it is, but defo. There was, um, yeah, there would have been contingency contingency plans for for yeah for what do we do if you know, yeah. um, so yeah, he's been he was, and his management team. It's not a Jim Gavin. It's not the Jim Gavin show. I'm sure as he'd say, but he 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 had people people well prepared, and we wouldn't have we would have never known that, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't know what they were doing the day before, you know. Yeah. Um, a last one because I've taken up enough of your time. I know you said there it was very easy to become all consumed by being a Dublin GA player, but it always, uh, I think, struck people from afar that you had plenty of other things going on, your music, and uh, you've gone and done a master's in sports psychology. I mean, you're with the bloody Olympians last year. That's no small feat. They're not taking on just anybody to work with their Olympians at the Olympics. So it seems like professionally, you've really found something that you're passionate about, that you're obviously good at. And that's kind of an exciting journey to be kind of really cracking on with now over the next 10 15 years hopefully i presume yeah 100 100 i i, I really, really have enjoyed it um it's been just a great break even it's gas you're still working in sport but it is a great break from 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 football so i've yeah look a bit of time now to plug into my own business i'm studying organizational psychology at the minute in dcu and i'm uh, as a part-time just to try and add a little bit more of a just just to broaden the net a little bit from just from just sport i've been doing a bit outside of sport in the last few years but i just want to have a bit more um you know theory solidity behind what i'm doing so I'm, I'm studying for a master's but no love it love the 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 um the, the mind i guess and and, yeah. and learn about it so that's been great it's been a great break music has been phenomenal play with my brother uh, once a week still um i missed it a lot during covid it's been great to be back i play in devitts every sunday night and um <laughs> it's um it's something that um yeah it was always good i used to when i was playing i used to do it in temple bar because no one really from ireland used to drink in there you know it was mainly <laughs> tourists and stuff but um so yeah look it's exciting i'm gonna crack on with the business couple of little bits that i'm really really excited about coming forward down the track um <laughs> So whether it's sport or whether it's organizational stuff, I'm I'm yeah excited to get stuck into it. You know, brilliant, brilliant. Well, it's the best to look with that. Uh, congrats on the career. I mean, that's fairly phenomenal. Just the eight All Irelands, Kevin McManaman. Congrats, and uh, I'm sure lots of Dubs fans will be wishing you well and success in the future. So thanks so much. Thanks very much. Appreciate you having me on.